Okay, we had a change in venue. This Bondurant. Bondurant, Bondurant, whatever. Uh, this will be a discussion over problem set 11. Problem set 11 is the last problem set for physics 213. Yay! <laughs> so the first thing that we do is we get rid of the erasers because they don't bother changing them. And we break out the real chalk. I also like this. It's not 101 in Lewis is perfect. This was a little bit wider, it would be competitive. A train is approaching you, its speed is 50 meters per second. If its whistle emits a sound at 2000 hertz, what are the frequencies you hear as it approaches and then moves away? So, velocity is 50. The velocity of sound is 350 we're dealing with a moving train a moving source so the frequency that you hear towards is the frequency of 1 minus V over Vs and the frequency that you hear away is that frequency over 1 plus V over Vs. V is 50, Vs is 350, F is 2000. So all you have to do now is plug and chug. Be able to identify that this is Doppler shift moving source towards. This is Doppler shift moving source away. And there you go. Simple plug and shut. Probably not even worth appetizer level type problem. Just a simple, can you manipulate these equations? <clears throat> All right, any question on that? Okay, good. Number two. Pipe that is closed on one end, stop. Pipe closed at one end means that the frequencies are NB over 4L, where N is 1, 3, 5, etc. All odds. So the fact that they've told you that the pipe is closed at one end has given you a lot of information. Its length is 1.2 meters long. What is the fundamental frequency and what are the first two overtones? So fundamental frequency, N is equal to one. First overtone, two. Second overtone, three. So this becomes V over 4L V over 2L, 3V over 4L. The overtones, and actually, what did I do wrong? For a half pipe. Tick tock, tick tock. It's the cardinal sin of uh, half pipe. The overtones are not skipping. So this should be three and five. And so there you go. What is that F Fundamental frequency. So plug in the numbers of whatever you have. Uh, v in this case will be 350. L in this case will be 1.2. So you have to remember 
no even ends in a half pipe. I knew this was going to happen. We'll bring more. Okay, number three. You punch out the closed end of the pipe from the previous problem. What are the first and second harmonic frequencies? So now it's a pipe opened at both ends. L is whatever L was in the first one, 1 1.2 meters. Velocity of sound is still 350. And then I want to know first and second uh, frequencies, first and second harmonics. F in V over 2L, where N is going to be 1 and 2. And then you just solve for that. So we get number three. Now number four is going to be a bigger, bigger type problem. So we're going to have to spend some time with this. In fact, I'm going to start. So you hear 3,000 coming at you, 2,400 coming away. Those are the frequencies that you hear. This is the roulette wheel problem and how you solve for it. Since it is a moving source, the towards is frequency over one minus V over Vs. Because the one thing that, that I have not given you is the velocity of the train, nor have I given you the frequency that you hear. And you cannot safely assume that the frequency of the whistle is simply the average. You're going to have to solve for it. What you do is you divide one by the other and those cancel. So this ratio here is going to equal 1 plus V over Vs, 1 minus V over Vs. So this step, you're taking this and dividing it by this to get this. The next step, cross multiply. And you get that. The 
part that we're going to do after that is distribute. And then after that, we're going to get all our V's on one side and our non-V's on the other. So the Fa prime goes over to the left, becomes negative. The minus Ft prime V over Vs becomes positive on the right. Next, we factor out the V over Vs. And we get this. And then we factor out everything but V. And that is the velocity of the train. So this is what we had to do in the roulette wheel problem. It's the same thing that you do now. Now to calculate any of the frequencies, we take the towards, it could be the away, it doesn't matter. And so now that you have V, plug that in there, you've got your towards frequency, you can get the source frequency right, right away. But four, in the old days, used to be like four problems. So let's break those down. This makes the assumption that this frequency is known and you know the velocity of the train, though really this is the more important part of the, uh, of the problem. So whatever number you got from that, the first part is the whistle on the train was a half pipe and the sound emitted was at its first overtone. What is the length of the whistle? So half pipe frequency in V over 4L, it is at its first overtone which means N is 3, so L is Vn over 4F. The F that you get from the first part, N is 3, that particular V is the velocity of sound in air, which is 350, and you're good to go. So that's the first part. <clears throat> 
The second part, if the whistle on the train was opened at both ends and it was at its first harmonic, what is the length? So full pipe, NV over 2L, it is at its fundamental frequency, 1. So L is V over 2F. N is 1. But what if the whistle on the train wasn't a whistle, but a guitar string of mass 20 grams and length 1.2 meters? If the guitar string was plucked and it was resonating at its fundamental frequency, what is the tension? So for a guitar string, it's NV over 2L, the V is tension over linear mass density. V is tension over linear mass density. The other thing that you know is lambda is mass of the string divided by L, or 1 over lambda is L over mass of the string. So this becomes frequency N over 2L tension length ms. Now we have to extract tension, square both sides. f squared, n squared, 4l squared, tl over ms. One of the l's cancels. Now all I'm looking for is tension. These three terms come up. That comes down. And there, we, there is our tension. So this cancels with that. And so this is a definition this is a definition. Sometimes it is used as um, row L, but we're not going to be using that in this class. Just getting used to the different ways of expressing things. Those two equations you just um, put in boxes, will we have those given to us on the test? Yes. away from the wall, a 4 meter string that has a mass of 25 grams, so we had a lot of information. L1 is 1.8 meters, the string is 4 meters, so that means that this length here is 2.2 meters. So for the total length, L1, L2 is equal to 4. <coughs> the mass is 25 grams. Hung from the end of the string hanging off the pulley. When plucked, 
it produces a fundamental frequency of 2,000 hertz. So the strain, when you pluck that, emits a frequency of 2,000 hertz. If you pluck that part of the string, the mass would just flop back and forth. It doesn't make any sense. So when you're plucking a string, this is how the Atwoods machine shows up in the third test. Looks like an Atwoods machine. It's not really, but it's as close as I can get. So you pluck it here. That mass is providing the tension. In fact, tension up mg down, you know this thing is just sitting there, sum of the forces vertically is equal to zero, T minus mg, so the tension is the mass times the gravity, or whatever is hanging off the end of this thing. I need to find the mass of the iron. So, frequency is N 2L T over lambda, N over 2L T over, now this is the mass of the string and what goes here that's lambda, that's the total length. So L1 plus L2. Not L1 or L2, it's the total length. Now we solve for, uh, well, let's do one more line. F in two L mass. I tend to do hanging mass, gravity. L one plus L two is. Um, oh, let me get this thing straightened out. vibrating length. The vibrating length is L1. So those needs to be changed into L1. Now the whole question comes into solving for MH. Then you know that the velocity of the string in, or the velocity of sound in the string is the square root of T over lambda. Yeah. Did you not have just left T as it was and then solved for T? And then you could have, but what I'm doing is I'm just doing everything algebraically okay. and solving for it. So this becomes F squared n squared, 4L1 squared, mass that's hanging, gravity, L1 plus L2, ms. Now you just solve for mass that's hanging. Yeah. 
and there you go. In one calculation, you calculate the hanging mass. If you try to do it with multiple calculations, you end up introducing a higher probability of making a calculation error. And so that's the advantage of doing it this way. do it like that. Uh, it said fundamental frequency, so n is 1. Oh, and then, uh-oh, then we got more stuff. Take the mass and experiment to the moon and find its first and third harmonic. Oh, goodness. Um, What I would do now is I would take this equation and change it to this. All I did was extract f, f squared in fact, and so when I get f, man I must have been vicious years ago to write this problem, n over 2l square root mass that hangs gravity l1 plus l2 mass and strength. So the only thing that changes is G. So the G that you use over here is 10. The G that you use over here is 10 over 6. And since I say to find the first and third harmonic, N is equal to 1 and 3. The mass doesn't change, the only thing that changes is gravity. So that's why it doesn't. Yay, I think we're in the back end of the problems now. Next, a uh, meter long guitar string weighs 12 grams. Stop. L, one meter. Mass of the string, 12 times 10 to the negative three kilograms. What is the tension of the string if the fundamental frequency is 300 hertz? N is three, or F is 300 hertz. N is 1. It's at a fundamental frequency. So F, NV over 2L, we're dealing with string, 
So F is N over 2L tension over lambda. And we can go even further. In this case, the length of the string is the length of the vibrating string, so it's just going to be one meter. Uh, since I made everything one, that makes everything kind of easy. That's one, that's one, that's one. Um, F squared, let's do it algebraically anyway. 4L squared TL over MS. One of the L's cancels, and I'm left with F squared 4 MS N squared is equal to T. N is 1. F is 300, MS is 12 times 10 to the negative 3, and that gives you your tension. After the tension is doubled, what are the first three overtones of the string? So someone real quick, give me, um, give me that tension. So four, 300 squared, 12 times 10 to the negative three. N is one, so I don't have to worry about that. So what is this? Four thousand three hundred and twenty newtons. There should be an L in the numerator. Oh, which means dang. Oh, it doesn't really matter at all. Um, bad news, I forgot to put an L in there. This L, only one of them canceled, but when it moves up to the F squared, it goes there. However, what's the value of L? One. So it doesn't change the final number. Tension doubled, what are the first three overtones in the string? So now, oh, uh, we can bring the L in for just a moment. And so that is the frequency. T is now 4,320 times 2. And I want to know the first three overtones. So use n equals 2, 
three, and four. And so that should be it for that. Okay, number seven, part one. First three harmonics for a tube, one point toe meters long that opens at both ends. So opens at both ends means frequency, NV over 2L, V is 350, L is given, N is 1, 2, 3. And so you just plug that stuff in. For the second part, what are the first three harmonics for a tube that's 0.6 meters long that opens at one end only? So you're going to do that. This length is half of this. V is still 350. N is 1, 3, and 5. And what you should see is the frequencies are the same. Pipes of half length that are half pipes um, have the same frequencies of pipes that are twice as big but open at both ends. For the second part of that one, it says the first three harmonics. Like, does the second one not, not exist? Um, that question has come up before. The first three harmonics that exist. If I wanted, if I was going to do, if we were going to have a discussion on that n equals 2, I think I would specifically say the second harmonic. But in this case, I said the first three harmonics. I think it's a very good question. It's a question that if it does come up on the test, by all means, ask. Because that's, it is a little bit fuzzy. Yes? Um, just to clean things up a bit, in fact, uh, it's what I did here. By bringing the L inside, I have to square it, and I kill that. Uh, squaring both sides produces an L in the numerator and an L squared in the denominator. It's six of one, half dozen of the other. It accomplishes the same thing. Number eight. Number eight has a mild error. The two trees are five meters apart. That information was not given. The mass of the cord, 0 0.65. Tension in the cord is 240. How long does it take for the wave to travel from one tree to the other? So the velocity is tension divided by lambda. The tension is given, the lambda is given in a way the mass of the string, and then the length, which in this case is 5 meters. Now, velocity is distance divided by time, so time is distance divided by velocity. The distance 
is 2L, the velocity is the square root of TL over MS. Or if you really wanted to adjust it, 2L square root <laughs> MS over TL. And you could even bring that L in, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Now you can just play with it. Now, train whistle, pipe only up at one end, emitting a sound at second overtone. Train moving at 75 meters per second towards a train station. You're at the train station, hear a frequency of 4,000 hertz. What is the length of the whistle in centimeters? Woo, a lot of questions. So what you do is you go line by line. Train whistle pipe only open at one end. Because it said in uh, in the problem, it specifically said how long did it take for the wave to go from one tree to the other and back. Oh, then cut the time in half. Okay, then L is just L, not 2L. Well. All of physics is now disproved. There. Okay, it is at its second overtone. Second overtone for a half pipe means three. Or wait, is it three? N is one, three, and five. Overtones go fundamental frequency, first overtone, second overtone. So N in this case would be five. The train is moving at 75 meters per second. This V is the velocity of sound, which is 350. Might as well mark that with an S. And then the velocity is 35 meters per second. It's coming at you. You hear 4,000 hertz. Oh, 75? Thank you. Fast train. So if you hear 4,000 hertz, the first thing you want to know is what's the frequency of the whistle? So it is a Doppler shift where it's coming at you. That's the equation that you use. You're looking for F. So F prime, one minus V over VS is equal to F. Now you're gonna get a frequency for that and that's the frequency of the pipe. That frequency is this. So what you're going to do now is solve for L, where n is 5, 
Vs is 350, and F is whatever you got from there. And then you convert it to centimeters? Yeah, then you convert it to centimeters, yeah. Yeah, what's coming out of this is meters. So you definitely just change the centimeters, which is, which is no big deal. Say that again. Okay. So in the problem itself, you read that the train was emitting the tone. You were at the train station and you heard a 4,000 hertz tone. That means you were the observer the train was the source, and the train was moving. So you're looking for a Doppler shift equation with a moving source. That's the Doppler shift equation for the moving source. That's the uh, frequency that is emitted. That's the frequency that you hear. That's the velocity of the source. That's the velocity of sound. If it was, I mean, it all just depends on if it was you that was moving and heard it? No, no, I get that part. It's after the F prime step to the L equals MD. So you solve for the frequency that you hear. This is the frequency that, I'm sorry, not the frequency that you hear. It's the frequency that's emitted. This is the frequency that is produced by a pipe that's opened only at one end. The F is in V over 4L. This frequency that you get here is the frequency that you plug in there. Because we had the fact that it was a pipe opened at one end, but what we didn't know was its frequency. Yeah, solve for L. Oh my goodness. All right, this is another one that we've done earlier before. It's like an Atwood's machine. I'm going to do it right this time. L is the length, 3 meters. L1 is the length from the wall, 1.2. That means this is 1.8 meters. This 3 meter string has a mass of 28 grams. 28 times 10 to the negative 3 kilograms. Forty gram iron mass is hung from the end of the string hanging off the pulley. What I want to know are the frequencies of the first, second, and third harmonic. So this is the plucked distance. If you pluck the other end, the mass would just go wee 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 and wouldn't make much of a sound. So the frequency is N B over 2L. N over 2L square root tension over lambda. Frequency is N over 2L, the tension is Mg.
and we get that. Lambda is the mass of the string divided by its total length L. So this is MGL over mass of the string. This M is the hanging mass. So the frequency is N over 2 times the vibrating length. The vibrating length is L1. What time? Uh, two. What time is it now? One fifty-five. One fifty-five. We'll um, we'll be out of here in five minutes. Not a problem. All we got to do now is extra. Uh, all we got to do now is just substitute one, two, and three for n, and uh, we have everything else. We have L one. We have mass of the string. We have mass that's hanging, we have gravity, we're good to go. Now let me, all right, executive decision since we're so short on time. Uh, don't do problem 11. Problem 11, I will, um, I'll work on in class, but it's not going to, I don't expect you guys to turn it in. All right, that's it. We're done.